and Chris, and they're going to be presenting on uh, the Christmas Lake Survey and Underwater Archaeology Project. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Anne, that's Chris. Um, our cats may come in, well, we've got one right here, actually. Uh, we're Christmas Lake Survey, uh, we did last summer and spring. We'd like to dedicate this uh, pr presentation to our pal, Leroy Guncher. Leroy and I were born in the same hometown, and he passed away last year, right near the beginning of the pandemic. So couldn't even go to a funeral for him. I, I, he's the first archeologist I ever met when I was four years old. He was in uh, beginning college, I believe at the time. So um, I've known him pretty much all my life. So, and also this, while we do get uh, legacy funding, we do get the historical grant, uh, Minnesota Cultural Historical Grant Program. This pro particular project was funded by our friend, Dr. Natalie Rosen. Without her, this project would not have happened. We can't thank her enough. Now, here we are, Maritime Heritage Minnesota. We run uh, Maritime Heritage Minnesota out of our house. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. And so this, this is it, where we are, this is where we run everything. And of course, we have to, when we're not in the lakes and rivers. This is us, we're a small group, uh, small group of volunteer divers and uh, Chris and I, who of course dive, and our small uh, um, board and a couple other uh, volunteers that help. And our mascots, of course, are Freddie Mercury and Roddy McKay, who will be probably coming in and out of here. We're in their area right now, so they might wanna get their perch back. Okay. When we do our survey, we uh, go around first uh, on the perimeter of the lake, do a lap around the lake, maybe two. Then we uh, do what's called mowing the lawn, where we uh, run transects uh, back and forth, usually uh, north, south, east, and west if there isn't any wind. But if we do have wind, we'll try to go with, with the wind or against the wind uh, when we're doing our transects because the uh, sonar image is clearer that way because of the chop. So you can tell this when we did the north-south on the on Chris, Christmas, like we had a slight, not quite north-south. So they're kind of, you know, they're a little skewed. Yeah, a little skewed, but we get the same data. It's, it's, but it's solid data when you don't go against the wind because then we get cavitation and really bad video or video recordings. And those other lines are when we see something interesting, we'll go back and look at it. Yeah, and redo it. We do that a lot. We'll do spot checking. Uh, if you can see on the upper part of the lake there on the left um, to the west, we could go into that very shallow area. Um, even if the water is a little high, sometimes the weeds are too deep or too thick. Uh, I mean, and the uh, transducer gets stuck. So we can't sometimes go into the very shallows unless we have a higher water condition and uh, low weeds or so very early. If we can get in right after ice out, it works the best. And uh, as for the, the, the visual there, that is the Glen Morris Inn or Madison Inn. So what the major resort on the lake, uh, some of the, re the wrecks that we have located and identified probably are associated with that particular resort. The first wreck, and we have 13 wrecks, our abstract that we put forward for this conference said that we had 12 that had site numbers. Now number 13 does as well. Did a little extra research so we were able to get, get a site number for that particular wreck. Obviously, you can't see a whole lot with this wreck. It's mostly buried, but. Able to determine it's flat bottom, but yeah. At, yeah, at this point. Not a whole lot, but we do know it is certain, certain and, attributes. And unfortunately, uh, Christmas Lake is um, infested with zebra mussels, so there are areas where these racks are nearly obscured by the... Uh, Especially in the very shallow. Yeah. Okay, the second one, flat bottom rowboat wreck, is, is a wonderful wreck. You can see it's up off the hill a little bit more. Uh, wonderful stern configuration. And you can see uh, there are three rocks that were put in to help keep it down when they scuttle it initially. So sunk on purpose. Also, Sorry, as far as you know, most of these are. Yeah, and it also had a little uh, uh, platform on the side, on the, start, on the port side, that was used for uh, cleaning fish out on the lake. Yeah, we were kind of wondering what that was. So we saw a photo of people using something like that, cleaning fish. The next six wrecks are wine glass stern wrecks, and the re this, they in general look like this wreck, not exactly, There's because they, they did have a variety yeah. of Christmas of Lake sites. had a, a large number of uh, wine glass stern wrecks. It's like a fleet, yeah. basically, yeah. The first one is really interesting to me, especially because it's a hybrid. It's, it's a early, early wine glass stern wreck with the attributes of what we call a fisherman's friend wreck or boat, uh, which is a very rudimentary, simple uh, fisher, fisherman's boat that has thick frames, very few frames. Uh, and this is a hybrid of that, very flat bottomed, hard shine even, uh, and, but a lot of it's missing, but notice the algae blanket. We were dealing with a bit of algae this summer. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of swoops right off the wreck. We called it snot. It was, it's snot, it's basically lake snot, yeah. Um, wine glass turn wreck three, again, mostly buried this one. It's been down there a while. Um, 
So we, we could tell it's a wine glass stern yeah, enough, but... Not a whole lot of yeah. other things we could tell about it yet. And you can tell that the sonar image up there on the left, you can barely find, see it right there in the sonar, but we did, we enhance things and can find them. So some of them we're lucky to find, some not so lucky because they're very obvious, like this one. Wreck number two for wine glass sterns, and just out of the silt wonderfully. Yeah. The majority of these wrecks were, the wine glass wrecks were 15 feet long. Yes, yeah. Ish, no. In this particular one, you can see what the, the bottom photograph, that is a Lake Minnetonka photograph, but that's basically what these wrecks look like, uh, these when they were boats and watercraft floating. Uh, so we just, wonderful configuration. Yeah. This one had the barbed wire yeah, on it. Not As, quite understanding whether there's barbed wire on it, but it's, or chain link fence or something like yeah, that. Yeah, is wrapped up in there. there. We have to, we'd have to clear a bit of the silt off to get. We're just for an identification at this point, just phase one. So, a wine glass turn wreck one. Um, so again, one of our better preserved wrecks. However, it is pretty much encased in zebra mussels. Yeah, we can go and take all those off. It, it we do. I do our initial survey. Uh, ne this next season, maybe we will go back and clear this off. We have to clean it off, go back up and let, let everything settle down. Uh, it can weigh down certain bits of the wrecks and really be harmful because they're so heavy. They get five, six, you know, mussels thick. Um, you can see the stern there very hardly. It's wine glass though. Yeah, it, is it, does, it does curve around <laughs> like a wine glass. Yeah. Um, number six, a wine glass stern, very visible. Uh, and we have some sea snot or lake snot, as you can tell in the, in the middle. Um, stem posts are really, really obvious on this one, so that's great. And occasionally we have areas that are uh, free of zebra mussels, and we think of that might be because it's, there's a, a spring welling up nearby that keeps the uh, zebra larvae from uh, drifting onto the wreck and attaching to it. Because Christmas Lake is spring-fed. It's, it's a very small lake. We have 13 wrecks in this lake that's under 300 acres, and we probably have more wrecks. This is what we just, uh, some more, we do have some anomalies we have to look at. Uh, so we, it's great when you don't have zebra mussels. This is what we get. And you do notice that right, nice big bench in the back. Some uh, wine glass stern wrecks had those big benches and some have smaller benches. It depends on the, on the construction. I was able to determine it was a wine glass wreck, stern wreck by sticking my arms underneath the silt and feeling along the transom. Yeah, silt has filled in at the back, <clears throat> but we're able to probe a bit. Okay, the uh, wine glass stern wreck five, Gorgeous, up out of the silt. I mean, just sitting on the bottom. Few zebra mussels. It's hardly buried. Yeah. That shows that there is, it's not current, but water movement because of the springs and just a fantastic wreck with, um, you can see the wine glass turn perfectly sitting. It's basically riding the bottom of the lake. Um, so getting wrecks like this, fantastic for construction attributes and bet for our studies. Just can't, can't, can't like it any better. Okay, moving on to the non wine glass sterns. This is the buried stern wreck. Okay, seeing it's up in the water column, uh, we, we do get those. Uh, MHM has found and documented several Lake Minnetonka, some, White Bear Lake. Some standing Regina, vertically on the lake, lake bottom, too. It's, it's strange. I mean, straight up, some straight up. This one's like this. I, I had to reach down. The stern uh, gunnel is buried about uh, three, a little over three feet below the silt. I had to reach down and, and basically almost stick my mask into the silt to feel along the stern to determine that it was square and that, and that there's no motor attached. So it must be some rocks or something that were stuck in the stern when, it, when they scuttled it. Yeah, because an engine or motor will do that because they're heavy. So things, and if something, a boat has flotation, this one doesn't have flotation. But say a fiberglass or aluminum boat or steel has flotation, it sometimes will go up into the water column. Um, we're worried a little bit about the health of this wreck because of the fact that um, the back can break. Uh, right now it's, it's sturdy. It's yeah. been down there. Uh, Gravity think will eventually win out. But it yeah. will. It's 65 years down there at least, but it's doing great. Um, but we would think of maybe propping that bit up at some point in the future. Um, just a fantastic wreck. Great construction attributes. And uh, next one, Alexandria Boatworks wreck. An actual wreck. We know where she was built, which is great because of her bow casting. This yeah. is Alexandria Boat Works, Alexandria, Minnesota. Those are usually not on wrecks. Before they were scuttled, they were, they were usually taken off or if uh, you know, divers in the past come down there and- uh, And looting them. And wanted a souvenir. Yeah, illegal, of course, uh, but a great wreck. And what's fantastic about have, finding this wreck this last summer, we now have, uh, just last month in January, we, have a, we do have a legacy grant ongoing uh, with the rare, we, we scan, 3D scan and document rare Minnesota watercraft that are in personal collections and in museums. And the Alexandria Museum, the Legacy of the Lakes Museum, uh, we went there a few weeks ago and documented one of their uh, Alexandria boat works, uh, boats, so a watercraft. A little different design than this, but we have, then we can make comparative uh, 
studies of these different kinds of bet wrecks or boats made by the same company. So it's great to find one on the bottom and one uh, in the museum. And also here's a second, look at that. I mean, how can, how, how can you not like that? You can, the way this is, the, the stern is gone. It's, it's fallen off or broken off or is buried. Might still be there, but it's not attached to the wreck. Gives us an opportunity though, to, to see every attribute, the stern knee is still standing up. Uh, just a fantastic study in how in boat construction, basically. So while the wreck itself might not be doing too great, uh, it's in cold, fresh water. It's in 42 feet. This is one of the deeper ones in that lake. So should be fine, but just a fantastic study there. We have us one steel wreck, the outboard motorboat wreck. Yeah, steel boats uh, first came into being around the 1890s. Uh, this isn't quite that old, but it is an earlier of an earlier generation of steel hull boats. You can usually tell by the uh, channel frames. Yeah, that's she's a got- That's a relatively yeah. old construction trait. She's got some flotation, we know that, because they enclosed bow and stern uh, benches. Uh, we do have a number on this, and obviously we do have a, a registration sticker for the state of Minnesota. MHM has a database of the different stickers, uh, many of them provided by the DNR, because that's who we contact for this sort of thing, but some not from the DNR, they, they, were, they have some gaps, so we're filling in gaps. This particular, it's a blue, it is not black, it's blue, and we know that it's a 1968-1969 sticker, we know that. It used to, the yellow sticker is what it used to look like, except in blue, uh, that's how it would have looked complete. Uh, we know on the side of the wreck, it says MN678, hard to see, but it is there, so we don't have a full registration number, and even if we did, we could not contact the DNR and get any information because their, their records there start in 1972. The 1959 to 72 records were thrown away during an office move, which you know stabbed you in the heart for us, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, so we, that's how we find out how old these things are there, using that information. There are gaps in the historical record in the recent past. Yeah, it's not, it's no fun. Um, the utility wreck and dive platform site, this wreck was, or boat is a boat at the point, stuck, sunk on purpose for purposes of teaching people uh, dive skills, basically, and that's what the platform was for. Yeah, the platform had uh, cinder blocks, you can see in the lower left hand picture there, there are uh, blocks hanging from uh, ropes yeah. to uh, keep that platform in place. Keeping it standing up, and you can see, look at the visibility, Christmas Lake, spring fed, it has the best visibility we've ever dove in in Minnesota, 30, I mean 35, 35 feet, yeah, yeah it's, sometimes, just we can't ask for anything better. Usually we're, we're happy if we have six feet. Yeah, and like Lake Minnetonka and stuff in certain spots. But you notice the steering wheel um, still there, the gas tank is still there. But it's a, it's a great way to study a wreck. And I, they don't use this platform as uh, a d training uh, place anymore, but they did in the 60s. And this is the cabin cruiser wreck. And you can see the, the boat that where it was on land and being sunk. We actually have photos of it being sunk by Travis Diving of Hopkins. They were the ones that sunk the boat as a dive training area. Um, and they put these discs uh, around yeah, the different they, places Basically there. to test their uh, depth gauges on. Yeah, the depth marker. And so they would teach certain scuba diver skills, uh, face mask clearing, that sort of thing. Illegal to do. You, this was illegal at the time and because it's since 1954, Minnesota has been protecting its wrecks. It's illegal to do them, but no one really knew it was illegal. And it's not that harmful, but you know, we don't, don't do that anymore. <laughs> we don't do that sort of thing. What a great wreck to, to, to document and say. Okay, that's all the wrecks. Uh, other anomalies, a marine railway, uh, which is kind of really interesting, a maritime site, a capsized pontoon wreck we thought was a boat. It's not, it's a, it's a raft. It would be towed or anchored. Uh, the, a wall that went in the lake, we think, during 1965 during the tornadoes. A couple of patio umbrellas. <laughs> and then anomaly 14 is shallow. We haven't dove on it because it's an umbrella. Our volunteer Kelly, that looks like an umbrella. He so, was right. Hey, we don't need to dive that. But anomaly 34, dig, we didn't know the anomaly wasn't clear in the sonar. Dig, thing, oh, this is great. It's in 50 plus feet of water and it's an umbrella. So that happens. We get down there and it's an umbrella. Um, the uh, furnace and washing machine, we think we're put on the, in the lake front, right, it's right in front of the Glen Lake in, and the uh, Radisson in where it was. We, but after it burned down in 1936, right into the lake, that does happen. Um, and we have the Chase Lounge, which from the house right near where it's in the water. Yeah, we, 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 we come to the surface, we look around and notice uh, identical uh, uh, furniture on, in right the lawn of the house next to us. So, and we have lots and lots more that we haven't shown you of the anomalies and more to dive. Um, if you're a boater, respect the dive flag. It saves our lives and does it, you don't get, <laughs> get the, the love guilt. of God, respect the dive flag. <laughs> for, you don't kill us with your propeller. Um, and watch out for northerns, juvenile ones, they bite. I know that, that's my leg. 
and MHM reports, videos, and more. Uh, we have our, that's the first pa front page of our website. There's our address. Um, we have YouTube videos. Our volunteers that helped us with this particular project were Josh, Josh Knudsen and Kelly Nahowig. Fantastic video, and I took screen caps from their video. Um, that wonderful cartoon by our volunteer, Betty Lloyd, who helps us with uh, some uh, editing and such. But you get, we have ton, we do Twitter, Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email us. And that's about it. And we made it on time by talking really fast. <laughs> yes, yes.